And you don't have to dumb yourself down. Glory to God. And I've seen this. Those of you who God is blessed. There are some of you who would dumb yourself down to make covert, jealous people comfortable. That is one thing I've learned about the, the, the differences and the nuances in some cases between those who are wicked and those who are believers. Now, that shine the light on those who are evil and wicked. They will misuse and abuse you and flaunt their, 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 their cursed blessings from the enemy. They will flaunt it in front of your face all day and feel no guilt and no shame. But some of the believers, the enemy tries to oppress you to feel guilty for being blessed. That is what I've noticed. There is a significant difference between believers and those who are wicked. Because I've seen those who don't belong to God and they have these fake, these false blessings. They will come to, to work. I've seen this. They will come to work and say, hey, I just got a new car. Hey, I just got a new car. I've got this and that. I got a new house and I got this, a new apartment. They will brag out. All day long about what the enemy has given them but the believer do not feel guilty for being blessed do not feel guilty because there are some of you who would dumb yourself down you go to certain environments or certain areas to where people don't have much and that breaks my heart because I've been there I hate seeing people struggle. I hate seeing people who are poor and downtrodden because I want so much more for them to experience the, 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 the spiritual and natural prosperity that God has for them. Because the Bible talks about that. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But the Bible confirms that God has come to give us life and give us that more abundantly. See, that's more than just spiritual. Nah. See, God has come to bless us spiritual, and he's also come to bless us in the natural if we'll get into position and into alignment with God. And the Bible confirms it. Because if God never cared about this natural world, he said, if my people who are called by my name would repent, turn from their, their, their evil ways, then will I hear from heaven and heal the land. Land is a natural resource. Thank you, Jesus. God acknowledges the natural because he said, I'll make you the head and not the tail. Thank you, Jesus. God has invested in this natural earth. Rather, many of you believe it or not. So don't feel ashamed. Don't dumb yourself down because God has blessed you. Because there are some people who will say, well, I'm not going to dress like that around them because they're poor and they're downtrodden. I get humility. I understand because I've been there. There are some people, you know, men and women. I'm not going to drive this car because I don't w want to offend them. I'm going to drive my, you know, my, my uh, lesser value car to make them comfortable. There's some people I'm not going to wear these fancy clothes that 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 God blessed me with and that I've worked so hard to obtain. You know, I'm not going to talk too too proper. My goodness, I can really deal with that. I don't want to talk too too proper because I don't want to offend them. I don't want to be too intellectual because I don't want them to be offended. I don't want to wear my hairstyle down and let them see that I have long, you know, long healthy hair. I don't want the other uh females to be offended so you dumb yourself down and men too you know i don't want to look too too clean cut because it offend them no no i understand humility and i get emotional here because i understand but embrace who you are and embrace the fact that perhaps god has blessed you and he's favored you and he wants to exalt you before men because what God did in your life, people who are poor and downtrodden, they need to know that what God did for you, he can do it for them. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible talks about this. 
when thou art converted, go back and strengthen thy brother. The Bible talks about this. Thank you, Jesus. And they were delivered by the word of their testimony. You are a living, breathing embodiment of the power and the awesomeness of God. Because God has blessed you spiritually and naturally. I get it. I've been there. Oh, I get emotional right here. I've been there. Hallelujah. Where we live now and what we're driving now. I know this is natural things and I know that these things are, are material and they'll fade away. I get it. But it's a testament that, that what God can do. The house that we live in now is a testament that God can deliver you from being homeless in a hotel. The vehicle that we drive now is a testament that God can deliver you after your car just clunked out on you. He'll give you something better. You don't have to walk all your life. You don't have to ride the bus all your life. God will bless you if you get into position, if you get into alignment. This is the true gospel. This is the true gospel. This is why the enemy fights me so hard on this channel. Many of you have no idea. I've been on this channel for three years, and I've fought so much. This is the true gospel of encouragement and deliverance that deals with raw truth. Stop feeling guilty for being blessed. Stop feeling guilty. Stop dumbing yourself down. You don't have to talk Ebonics to make them comfortable. I get it. I understand because I've been there. People who know me know that I'm very, very, very laid back. Very, very professional, humble. But I'm not going to dumb myself down to make other people comfortable. I'm going to show you that there's a better way to live life. If you repent and get right with God and let God lead and guide you, he'll take you places you've never been. Some of the things God has done in my life, I can't tell nobody nothing. I've, I've, I've seen so many things. I've seen these. I've been up close with some of these celebrities out here in Atlanta. I've been like shoulder to shoulder. I've talked to, to, to a few of them. And I have no interest in the worldly entertainment out here in Atlanta. It's nothing but deadness. I want God. I don't want celebrity fame. I want God. People who know me, my wife will tell you, I don't want to be famous. I don't want my, my face even being known. I don't want to be famous. I don't want people asking for uh, autographs. That's why this channel is the way that it is. I don't put my face out there any, uh, anymore the way I used to. I want my privacy. I don't want to be famous. I want God. I've always been like, like, like that. Keeping a low profile and taking care of my family. So I understand humility. I understand it. But let them see what God has done for you. Show them that God can deliver them just as he did you. Don't dumb yourself down to make certain folk comfortable. Let them call you stuck up. That's okay because God knows your heart. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now I understand when the Bible talks about people, man looks at the outside, but God looks at the heart. I understand now because all of the blessings and breakthrough that many of you have, God is looking at the interior of your heart. He knows your motives. That scripture was not a, 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 a excuse to wear provocative clothes. No, that's not what that scripture was. God sees the heart. Men look at the exterior, but God looks at the interior. He knows. So you embrace who you are. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Man, I feel God on this one. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Man, I feel God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I give God praise. I give him worship. Now, let's, let's move into the religious system. Let's transition into these churches, these false churches, and even those that are ministries governed by holy pastors. I'm going to deal with this. 
Because, yeah, I've talked about, you know, the natural aspect and, and, and those who, who God has blessed, you know, spiritually and even with, with material possessions. But let's deal with those of you who God has blessed you with, 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 with blessings and breakthrough and your calling. Because there's some of you who God has blessed you with an awesome gift of teaching, an awesome gift of, of the prophetic, an awesome gift of, of evangelism. He's blessed you with, with apostleship, something I'm very keen and familiar with. He's blessed you, to, you know, in so many areas. He's blessing your ministry. And stop dumbing yourself down to make people comfortable. There, because there are some of you who are blessed even in ministry. And you've dealt with jealousy from pastors because how God used you. I've been there. I've been ran. I mean, I almost covertly ran out of churches several years ago. Me and my wife. Because the pastors thought that we were trying to outshine them. I've experienced that. People, some people are jealous of your anointing because how God used you. Because when I was coming up in ministry in the late 90s and when I accepted my call to preach and I think 97, 98 and I did my initial sermon in 1999 I remember the covert jealousy because in the religious system wow all these places I went to growing up was nothing but religious systems. I only know one pastor who was factually saved who was factually saved and he's passed away now God bless him. But he was the only saved pastor I ever knew in my whole career of being in the religious system. Because everybody else was just talented, but they were not holy and they didn't walk in repentance and obedience. They, they were just talented vessels of carnality hiding under the religious system. But there was always this thing. I want to encourage those of you in ministry, rather you're on social media, Social media ministry is evolving at a high level. Many of you, God is blessed who you are. He's blessed your teaching and preaching. And some people are jealous. And even in the religious system, I want to encourage those of you who are in ministry, continue to teach and preach the word of God and don't worry about the jealousy and the covert snares and hate of men. Keep going. And keep praying. Daniel had haters around him. But the Bible said that Daniel was a praying man. Daniel had an excellent spirit. I need many of you to inherit the excellent spirit that keeps praying. That keeps being obedient. Even when the enemy is trying to block your ministry. Keep being obedient. Remain into position and into alignment with God. As they hate on your calling and who you are. Because in the religious system, there was always this, this, this covert jealousy that you was not allowed to outdo the pastor. That was something that, 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 that was so prevalent when I was in ministry. You better not out preach the pastor. You better dumb yourself down. You better make sure that you don't outshine him and outdo him because it would offend them. See, there's so much that there's so much religious politics. I could tell many of you what happens behind the scenes. You better not out preach him. You better not outdress him. You better not outdo him. Now, all pastors are not like this, but some of them, boy, they got some issues. And the truth is. It's not your fault that God has anointed you. It's not your fault that perhaps the pastor has had that the pastor ha doesn't have an anointing like you because some of them don't have a prayer life. Oh, I'm going to deal with, with uh, this and I'm going to say it boldly. It's not your fault that the pastor is carnal. It's not your fault that the pastor didn't seek God like you. It's not your fault that the pastor chooses not to deny his flesh. It's not your fault that the pastor doesn't have a prayer life. It's not your fault that, that and I'm going to say it boldly, it's not your fault that, that, that some of these pastors just can't teach and you just can't preach because some of you pastors are not anointed by God. Yeah, I said it. And I'm going to say this too. 
with the unction of the Holy Spirit, some of you, I don't care how large your YouTube channel is, some of you are not anointed. I don't care how big your church is in your mega religious system down there in Texas. Yeah, I said it. Some of you are not anointed and the power of God is not with you. The only thing that many of them have is religion and a bunch of religious people with itching ears building them up. But in reality, they have no anointing because the presence of God is not with them. That's why the Bible says that wherever the presence of God is, there's freedom, there's liberty. That's why they're not changing. Because the pastor doesn't belong to God and he does not have enough power to push people into repentance and holiness. That's not your fault. And I say it boldly. Many of them are not even anointed. So don't dumb yourself down to make them comfortable. Embrace who you are. God has called you. He's anointed you. Quit dumbing yourself down. And embrace who you are. But let me shift gears. Some of you, God has blessed you, not just with, with finances and, 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 and just ministry. Some of you are intelligent. You're very smart. God has blessed you. And I'm going to deal with this. Stop feeling guilty. Because God has given you blessings and breakthrough of intelligence. Stop. Some of you, they, they call you nerd. They call you a nerd. They call you a bookworm. And I'm going to deal with this. I'm going to go back to the arena of African Americans. Because that's what I know. And I say some African Americans are, are like this. Not all. Some of you, God has blessed you with intelligence. And people will tell you that some African American people who are smart and, and intellectual and very astute and they articulate their words very proper, but they're still you know, they're still people who love God. They're still down to earth and they're still relatable. But God has blessed them with so much intelligence. There will be certain demographics of African-American people who will say that you're acting white. Oh, what an insult to say that intelligence is a byproduct of being white. Oh, man, that's crazy. I can even name how many, how many unintelligent, uninformed white people I've came across who, who spoke in this country ebonic language stuff. So we have to stop that because every, Carca every Caucasian person is not intelligent. That's a fact. Now I'm saying this to say this and I've met several smart intellectual Caucasian people. Oh I have and I've learned so much from stocks, investments, I'm going to lie. But I use that as an example to say that quit thinking that intelligence is a byproduct of white people because it's not. Intelligence comes from intelligence comes from God. Intelligence is what it is. It comes from God. So if an African American person is articulating their words and God has blessed them tremendously. Stop saying that. Would you please stop acting white? That's the insult. That's the insult to, to the majesty of, of almighty God. Because intelligence does not come from white people. Intelligence comes from the creator. Our spiritual covering. Our father. Our protector. The creator of heaven and earth and all of us. It comes from God. I would feel better if they said you're acting just like God. Talking all proper. But that's what some of them do. And some of you have dumbed yourself down because God has blessed you. You don't want to read a book around them because they get offended. And I've seen this. Oh, you're acting white. They're reading a book. They're trying to be a white. Why do we have to be put in this cage? Why do we have to be so limited? So I want to say this to many of you. Stop dumbing yourself down to make people comfortable. God has blessed you. He's blessed you. And even some of you, he's blessed you with a beautiful, loving family. Embrace that. 
Embrace it. Stop feeling guilty. He's, some of you, he's blessed your children. He's blessed your marriages. He's, he's blessed your, 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 your business endeavors. Don't feel guilty. Don't feel guilty. And let me deal with this before I close. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let me deal with this before I close. Before I close this out. Thank you, Jesus. We have to we have to embrace who we are. And this is why you can't take everybody with you. Some of you be very careful who you tell stuff to. I learned this a long time ago. You can't take everybody with you when you go house shopping. You can't take everybody with you on a shopping spree because God is blessing you. You can't take everybody with you when you're going to buy a brand new car because everybody is not happy for you. And I've learned that in my earlier years. I've learned that you can't take people with you. And me and my wife, whenever we go to, 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 to make a major purchase because of blessings and breakthrough, we go alone. I take nobody with me. Because the enemy loves to plant and position covert people around you. Whenever God is blessing your life here, they come and do not give them place because the Bible confirms that neither give place to the devil. And some of you, when God has blessed you, you've given the devil place by allowing people to frustrate what God is doing in your life. Thank you, Jesus. You can't take everybody with you. And I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. Because they'll always say, well, why are you buying that, that house for? Because some of them are jealous. They'll say, well, why are you buying that kind of car for? Some of them are jealous. They'll find any reason. You like it. You, you, you're pleased with your purchase. And they'll say, why you buy that type of couch for? Why you buy that for? Because they're jealous. They're, some of them are miserable and do not give them the keys to set up shop of jealousy in your life. You can't take everybody. You can't take everybody with you. Glory be to God. I said that. Way. You can't take everybody with you. There, there are some people who the enemy will send your way when God is blessing you. Have you wondered why that as soon as God begins to bless you and open up doors for your life? Here they come. Here they come. Here come a text message. Here comes a phone call. Here comes adversity. Here comes spiritual warfare. Here comes every devil available to torment your life because God is blessing you. And that's why so many of you are experiencing aggressive spiritual warfare right now because God is blessing you right now. Even as I speak, some of you, God is going to blow your mind. I feel this one prophetically. Some of you, God is going to bless you with spiritual and natural abundance. And you are going to be blown away by what God is going to do in your life. Because there's a scripture that says, for I reckon the sufferings of this present time cannot be compared to the glory which shall be revealed unto you. I want you to understand that your blessing is going to overtake take you and when it does I hope you remember what I said and what God is using me to confirm in your life thank you Jesus the enemy is afraid of where God is taking you he's afraid and that is why whenever you come close to breakthrough you will notice spiritual warfare begins to increase you will notice that there will be, be marital issues for some people there will be relationship issues and, and family issues and, and, and issues with your children the closer you become to spiritual and natural breakthrough I don't mean just cash no I don't mean just money because see that money is good I thank God for it he'll give it he'll make you, you wealthy with no sorrow. He will make you the head and not the tail. But sometimes he'll do spiritual things in your life that transcend just natural wealth. He'll give that because the Bible talks about it. And my God shall supply all of our need according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. That word confirms that God will take care of our physical attributes on this earth. The Bible speaks of it. But some of you, he's blessing you not only financially. Oh man. But he's blessing you spiritually. Because some of you, 
He's going to bless you because you chose to not give the enemy your soul in exchange for wealth. I'm going to say this too. There are some of you, God blessed you because you turned down the wealth from the enemy. And I'm going to say this because down here in Atlanta, it's a lot of that. I'm very familiar with the TV and the film industry out here in Atlanta. Very familiar with it. I mean extremely familiar with it. There's a bunch of people who would give their soul to demonic stuff in exchange for wealth. But some of you chose not to bow down to Satan for wealth. It's a powerful thing when we say no to the enemy and we be patient and get what God has in his hands and still have our soul intact. That's powerful. There's something about being blessed by almighty God, but I still have my soul intact. People who know me know that I'm not, I don't lust for cash. All I want to do is take care of my family and make sure they have all they need. But I will say this. It is a blessed place to be in, to be blessed spiritually and naturally and still be in position with God and still have your soul in the safety and the confounds of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. That's a high place. To where God is blessing you spiritually and you still love, love God and you have natural and, and natural dominion in this earth and you still have possession of your soul. Glory to God. I want you to understand that whatever the enemy is trying to give you in exchange for your soul, God can give you greater if you be patient, if you wait on him, if you repent and turn from sin and get into alignment with the presence of God. He'll give you greater. He'll give you wealth without sorrow and not these temporary shallow blessings of wealth from the enemy in exchange for your soul. Because the Bible confirms that what profit a man to gain the whole world only to lose his soul. The rich man and Lazarus is a prime example of that. The rich man had everything in the natural realm. And Lazarus uh, uh, begged for the crumbs off his table. The rich man lost. He lost. Vote in the natural. The rich man had everything. In the spirit, he was bankrupt. Don't fall for the wealth of the enemy. The wealth of God is greater. In my closing, God is blessing many of you. I'll say this again. Embrace what God is doing in your life and where God is taking you. Embrace. Embrace it. And those of you who are waiting on breakthrough, I'm going to tell you from a fact and from my own reality and my own experiences that blessings and breakthrough is coming your way. In Jesus' name. And I declare, let each and every person that, that's waiting on breakthrough, I declare spiritual and natural breakthroughs to overtake their lives and their families. In Jesus' name, according to your will. I declare that encouragement and deliverance to locate every person that's, that's, that's waiting, everybody that, that has heaviness of heart, that's waiting on breakthrough, spiritual and natural. I declare them to locate them in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare now that everybody that's currently received the breakthrough, that they shall embrace and celebrate what you're doing in their lives and not let the enemy to cause them to feel guilty in Jesus name. I declare that every stronghold and every attack, every weapon of the enemy that's trying to block or bring frustrations because of the blessings that are going to be released into the lives of your people, I declare these weapons of the enemy have been cast out by the consuming fire of God. In Jesus' name, I declare that, that, that they will continue, oh God, to walk in humility. They will continue to walk in wisdom by not giving the enemy place in their lives through people or family members to frustrate the blessings that you have in store for them. In Jesus' name, God, I thank you. Father God, I thank you in advance for blessing your people like never before. I thank you for a financial transfer, a financial shift that shall happen into the lives of your people according to your will in Jesus' name. That we be able to not only 
take care of ourselves, but help the poor and those in need and make a difference in this world. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. That was the word of the Lord this day. I hope and pray that something encouraging was said or mentioned that would make an impact in your life. Again, thank you so much for dropping by the Deliverance and Breakthrough channel. I will continue to make spiritual content as God leads and always remember, until next time, no weapon formed against you or your family shall prosper. Until next time, be safe and be blessed. Amen.